Today, I would like us to discuss the very important and vital issue of where we stand in relation to the impending constitutional convention to which all of you have received in the post in the last few days the documents for the intended poll to choose delegates to attend this gathering early in the new year to look at the question of our federal constitution. Now, at the moment, people are very firmly, and indeed perhaps unreasonably firmly, taking the view that only the issue before us is one, that of a republic or a monarchy. Now, to be perfectly frank, this is a rather narrow and, I think, untrue picture of the position. Our hundred-year-old constitution is full of all sorts of anomalies and creaks at the joints which require attention. Whether we have a crowned head or a president, these things require attention and mending, affecting a wide range of state and federal rights and their interaction and the roles of the head of state and of state governors. Now all these matters would have to come before any convention quite apart from any suggestion that these things are, in fact, uh, the only issue. Uh, undoubtedly, there will be a, an increasing number of public issues where we will realise national thought needs to be taken in any amendment to the Constitution to provide a sensible way of curing the, the unworkable or conflicting and difficult elements in our present system. Uh, if you want to look at the question so much canvassed in the press of monarchy or republic again, well, there, what sort of monarchy or republic? For example, you can have a president elected for three years, for five years, for seven years. You could have the American rule requiring a person to be born in Australia, uh, or you need not have it. You can consider whether the powers of the president are perhaps better given to a man elected the same way, who, like Cromwell, were called Lord Protector. After in the world now, presidents are two a penny. Again, for a monarchist, you might think, well, uh, if we don't stick with the steady as she goes for policy, policy of the present uh, monarchist movements, what about having a local member of the royal family as resident head of state, with their heirs having succession? I cannot but believe the ancient royal families of Thailand, Japan and Nepal would far rather deal with a monarch from an old European dynasty than they would with a temporary president. Uh, if you feel this is too much of a problem, again of course, and wanted to avoid the term republic, you could very well have what could be called a regency where the Queen would withdraw from all her powers in Australia, but the country would remain a monarchy with a regent appointed by Parliament for, say, five or seven year periods. And the actual federal state legal inter interactions would that way need probably less modification. Now, all those issues need debating seriously, courageously and firmly by this convention. We need to choose the best possible people, so do try to consider taking a lively interest and voting voluntarily for those you think best suited for the task in this postal ballot. A right decision regarding all these issues is not just a simple one at all of one sovereign head of state or the other kind. It has a much bigger implication for our whole way of life, and it's vitally important we choose the opportunities we have now to use well, properly and effectively, our chance to make decisions. This country needs to plan very well and very wisely for a difficult century in a distinctly problematic future environment.